avoiding burnout is a huge priority. And I believe that time blocking in your diary is one of the best ways of doing that. And when I mean time blocking, I mean saying I will see clients from 9am to 3pm on a Monday and I will see them from then to then. Um, I will have a lunch break and you block that out. So it means that when someone says to you, oh, you know, I'd love to book in with you, then you say, oh, what day suits you best? And they say, oh, Thursday. I say, oh, I don't actually work a Thursday. And then you'd say, what days suit you best? They might say Thursday. Oh, is there any other day? So they say Monday, say. So Monday, morning or afternoon? Oh, afternoon. Right, well, I've got two or three o'clock. What do you prefer? Oh, great. Two o'clock's marvellous. And off you go. Because you've sorted through and you've made sure that it's within your working time. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello everyone and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How the devil are you? So today is one of our Q&As. So I've been sent questions when people enter the Facebook group Strictly Education and Support and when people book in to see me for a focus call. And if you've not met me yet and you'd like a focus call, then I'll add the link to the show notes because I'd love to meet you and speak with you. So what questions do people ask? Well, a lot of them are very similar and a lot of them are a little bit different. And this one is similar but different. So it's from Tamara and she says, nutrition student at Endeavour, I left on, I have un, I have under a year left part time. Studied naturopathy out of high school, qualified but had to, had a work detour and children. I'm now ready to start my business but I'm not sure of the first steps to take. So obviously she's still in college. Well, Perhaps when she sent this, she's now finished. But when you're in college, in that last bit of time, in that last six months, it's a really great time to connect with everyone, to make sure that you have a student association membership, that you've signed up with all of the companies, that you've signed up um, with Nutripath, that you've signed up with everyone you can sign up with as a student, so that when it comes to you converting that into a business membership with them, which means for the companies, that means you can buy more than just for yourself, you can buy client amounts of stock, it means that it's just for them literally uh, an upgrade, a flick of the switch, changing you from student to practitioner. For the associations, because you're a student with them, you then get a reduced rate or fee free for the first year. So it's really worth being a student first and joining a couple of associations that you really like the look of. Uh, that last bit, you've got exams, you've got lots of things happening, but you've got downtime as well. You've got time when you don't want to be looking at your classwork, you want to be doing other things, but you've got your laptop out and you're you know, procrastinating, prevaricating, thinking about other things. You could be thinking about websites, you could be thinking about where you want to take your practice and what it is that you want to do. We all need policies, we all need... Um, you know, our OSH policies, so our health and safety policies. So you could be writing something boring like that. They still need to be done. So at some point, you've got to think about doing those. What about the T's and C's for your website and your business? What about the um, confidentiality things that you need and patient consent? These are really boring things, but they've got to be done at some point. And if you're avoiding something else, it might be that you sit down and do something boring for five minutes and you'll get back to what you meant to be doing. The, the boring things are there, but they have to be done. And in every state, there are different things that you have to do. In every country, there are different things you have to do. In the majority of countries, you have to register if you're working with children. So you've got a working with children check. Now, in South Australia, we also have to do additional things with that. And the chances are in your state or territory or your country, you have to as well to be able to work with children if you're going to. So make sure those things you know without, even if you don't apply now because they have a limitation on them, they have a time limit, or you're halfway through because of college and you've done it for college, you can leave that until it needs redoing. But make sure that date is in your diary for when it needs to be redone. 
Now, when you go out into practice, when you qualify, when you finish that college time, it's really important that you take a break between college and commencing practice. You you've already burnt yourself out being in college. There's been a lot of work. You've had a lot of stress and now you need to take a break. So it's a really good idea if a number of these things are done before you take that break and don't think to yourself, oh, I'll do them when I'm on the break, I'll do them when I'm on the break. It might be you have to take a break and then take some time to sort things out. But do time limit that. Otherwise, you'll be like me and you'll discover a year and a half later, you're still saying, oh, no, 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 you don't have to pay me. It's okay. I'll just give you this advice. Yep. So there's things like your ABN. Um, you can get those anytime. Register your business name. You can do that at any time as well. Um, they last for three years or depending how much, you, how long you pay for them. But they're a really good idea to register and do. It's a really simple online form. It can be done anytime. Then once you've done all this sort of basic boring background stuff, we've got to think about where is it that you want to work and how is it that you're going to work. So where is it going to be um, like me now online or do you want to work in rooms? Do you want to work for somebody else? Do you want to go out there and find somebody else? Maybe your local chiropractor only works two days a week and so it might be that you could rent a room there or it might be a spa not far from where you are or a salon that you think yeah actually you know they're all health conscious they're all they've got the same mindset maybe I could ask them if I could rent a room to start with. Now when we're starting out we generally don't have a ton of clients so we're hoping that wherever we go we'll get referrals. Now one of the things that would encourage referrals and there's not a lot of people out and there's a lot of worry about you know um, office spaces being and shop spaces being empty so it's worth going in with a negotiation mindset. Okay, one of the best pieces of negotiation advice I was given before I rented rooms was they'd said they wanted three plus two. That is, it's a guaranteed three years, you're locked into the contract, and then you've got signing rights at the same prices for the next two years. And as it was, it was a terrible spot. The two of us went in together, neither of our fault. It was just we chose a bad spot and things just didn't work out, right? I've talked about this in past episodes. I lost a lot of money. My partner lost a lot of money. It was a lousy location. Now, with now I, we knew all the things to do. You meant to sit outside your location. You meant to check people are coming by. But it did look to us on the surface that it was going to be a good spot. But the best advice I was given was, well, why don't you make it a two plus three, just in case it doesn't work out so you're not locked in for three. And that was the best advice ever because I was only locked in for two. But now the way things are, you can often avoid those lock-ins because places are empty. So if you're going into someone else's rooms, rather than saying, yep, I'll give you that amount of money, why not say, well, can I give you $10 per client up to that amount? Because if I only have one client, then I give you $10. If I have eight clients, then you get the $80 that you want for the day or whatever the divisible number is if they have empty space. If they don't have empty space and they have systems and referrals and you're going to get clients as soon as you move in, then they're going to say no. But when you're starting out, it's worth thinking about all these other and different ways of negotiating that weren't available, you know, three years ago, two years ago. But, you know, it's always worth going in with that negotiation mindset. And once you're in that room, you know, what is it going to look like? That might just be in your dreams right now. But where will you be putting your client information? So we're all online now. So there's a number of um, systems that we can use. You know, Simple Clinic, there's Practice Better, there's, um, oh, there's hundreds of them. Um, I can't even think of them all at the moment, but there's an absolute ton of them. I'm, I personally use Halaxy because it's free. But you have to remember that the one that you start out with, chances are, is the one you're going to end up sticking with. Because it's hard to move your clients over, it's hard to change over, it takes a lot of time. So I moved from paper to the online to Halaxy. I had Halaxy for a long time when it was called something else, a totally different name. And I only vaguely used it for a very, very, very long time. And then I finally thought, okay, I actually have to use this, I have to come off paper. And in 2019, I paid um, a new graduate to scan everything and put it in the sky and get it all sorted for me. I mean, that. That was a week's worth of work for her. So, you know, 
if you want to change from one to another, you really have to think about it. So it's really worth going in with your eyes open to these systems and seeing the way you want to do it. So when we're using these systems, now I say Halaxy is free, but it's not if you use some of the, um, the texting service and the messaging service and if you take your money through them. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. But I know Simple Clinic has a really good deal for when you're just starting out. So a really good deal. So that's worth checking out. It's really worth looking at these things. So, you know, the system that you're going to use, have a look. You don't have to purchase it yet, but you can be ready to go when you are ready to go. You've got all the companies joined up. You've got your association. You've got your in on those. You've done all the government things and the legal things you need to do. Now, we need to avoid burnout. And one of the ways of avoiding burnout is to make sure that we calendar block and we make sure that we work within those calendar times. So most of us start out having more than one job and I've always enjoyed having more than one job and I still consider myself having more than one job because I mentor as one job and I see clients as the other job. Now, as I get older, I'm enjoying the mentoring more and more. So I used to lecture and that's no longer available and that's cool. But the mentoring has taken that place. But I liked going out to do something else. I liked being somewhere else. I liked not just seeing clients day in, day out. So really think about it. Is, is it that you're going to call the other job the sandwich job and you're desperate to get rid of it? Well, the simple fact is you actually enjoy it. And can you go part time there and be part time in your new endeavor, in your in your business. Working for someone else is much easier than working for yourself and it's a great way to make sure that there is money going into superannuation and those things that won't be happening at the start of a new business. So avoiding burnout is a huge priority and I believe that time blocking in your diary is one of the best ways of doing that and when I mean time blocking I mean saying I will see clients from 9am to 3 p.m. on a Monday and I will see them from then to then um, I will have a lunch break and you block that out so it means that when someone says to you oh you know I'd love to book in with you then you say oh what day suits you best and they say oh Thursday say, oh I don't actually work a Thursday so what other day um, you know and then the or I don't work every Thursday. If you're willing to go, well, actually, I could see them on a Thursday, then you say, I don't work every Thursday. I only work alternate Thursdays. So do you prefer a morning or an afternoon? Or you can just say, no, I don't work a Thursday. My child is doing blah, blah, and I have to be there and do that, or I work in my other job. Um, so it's a red, and then you'd say, what days suit you best? They might say Thursday. Oh, is there any other day? A uh, Tuesday. Morning or afternoon? So we've got the, the, so they say Monday, say. So Monday, morning or afternoon? Oh, afternoon. Right, well, I've got two or three o'clock. What do you prefer? Oh, great. Two o'clock's marvellous. And off you go. Because you've sorted through and you've made sure that it's within your working time. It's really important that we protect ourselves from burnout. Auto replies, make sure they're there on your emails. And then we have to think about getting out there. And I've got a number of um, episodes on getting out there into the world. So I can suggest that you pop back and have a look at some of those. The start of the week one, 116 is a good one. And um, 113, episode 113, getting back out there. That might be a really good one to go and listen to so that you can think about the places you can get out to so that you can share your message and share it with others. And of course, collaboration. Who can you collaborate with? That's some of the thing, you know, you really want to look at. Who can I collaborate with? What can I create with other people so that um, they compliment me, I compliment them, and we can create something together that might ultimately give me, preferably, some one-to-one -one clients, and it might give them one-to-one -one clients. But how am I going to collaborate with someone? What are we? What is our goal together, and what could we achieve together? So that's today's answer to the question. I hope it's been helpful to you. And I really look forward to seeing you um, in my group, maybe on a focus call. And if you've enjoyed today, it'd be nice if I got that five-star review from you. I'd love it if you did. Every review helps boost the podcast so that other people see it. And another thing you can do is share it with your friends. Share it in your Facebook groups so that other people know that I'm out here wanting to help them and able to help them. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to speaking with you soon. 
Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.